Bridge for Better Health was created back in 2013. Um, it was, uh, we had some data that showed that we had some pretty significant health equity gaps uh, within our population. Specifically, we had two municipalities um, that were lagging behind on pretty much all health indicators, uh, but particularly the, the life expectancy was five to six years shorter than, than the regional average. And um, when we looked at the wider determinants for health, uh, these communities also showed um, poorer results when it came to education, wealth, uh, employment, etc. We were experts, like many other uh, health actors are, on, on creating um, effective solutions around single issues as single providers. But we weren't very good at coordinating these efforts across providers or, um, or looking at the more strategic perspective of what this population might need uh, on, on the long term. Um, so we decided to adopt a, a partnership approach and, uh, and we basically gathered all the traditional healthcare providers um, such as the hospital, the psychiatric services, the GPs, the place-based care services uh, run by the municipality with the non-traditional healthcare actors um, such as the employment services, city planning, education, social services. And then we also invited the local business community and civil society to come in around the table and basically have the conversation of how we each could contribute towards uh, better health and well-being for this population. The overall vision was that by 2040, we wanted to bring the life expectancy of this population on par with the national average. And, and more importantly, we wanted to reduce the equity gaps within our population within that same time frame. So the idea is that we identify uh, a shared complex problem that not one actor can solve on their own. And then we dig in the data, we look at the existing resources and the expertise, and then we uh, want to approach the, the issue with one, looking at the policies and the guidelines influencing this problem, uh, two, the existing services and interventions in place, how can they be adapted and coordinated to improve um, the solution around this problem, and third, do we need to like develop new interventions or do we need to develop new knowledge in order to create these interventions? We've also seen that it's super important to segment. Um, so what we do is that we work with different subpopulations and, and basically design a group of stakeholders around that individual subpopulation over time. Uh, so we work from, from everything from like the broader school-based populations of students on their um, health behaviours and well-being to the much more narrow uh, subpopulation of, of VIP users with uh, complex needs across um, hospital services, psychiatric services, um, substance abuse and social services. Um, and every time it's a different group of stakeholders. Um, it's also a different group of um, of the funders around each intervention uh, or area of focus. Um, and, and we've worked a lot with, um, with external donors from both public and private foundations and then the different stakeholders in the partnership also bring in funding uh, around the, the efforts. So I think what comes across in all the, the work we've done is that we've uh, we're working very deliberately with the improvement methods. We're working very deliberate with co-production, co-design. Uh, and then we're working with the data over time. And, and we're seeing that a lot of our um, individual, individual interventions are now being spread. Uh, the scope of our partnership is, is being spread and, and the methods we've developed um, are being spread uh, both regionally um, to other geographies within our region, but also uh, nationally. And then meanwhile, we still have a lot of work to be done in uh, and with our local population to improve um, their health and well-being and, and reduce the equity gaps.